Hi friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. Here we are going to discuss about the definitions as per the Posh Act 2013. Posh Act 2013 has defined couple of uh, items in its act which need to be understood in detail. So let's go ahead and see that. The definitions that we really need to understand is who is an employer as per the act, who can be an employee as per the act and what actually is a workplace. We generally tend to think the place that we work in office is called workplace. The answer is yes, but there is an extension to it. Let's see that in detail. Then there is something called as extended workplace. Now, the Posh Act is also applicable onto the extended workplace and that is the reason why we need to understand what external workplace is. Okay, so let's go ahead. Who is an employer? Now, any organization could be a government organization or a private organization or even a house that becomes a employer. A person who is heading this organizations could be government and a person who is responsible for management of private organization or a person who employs all the people in the house are also responsible and they are known as employer as per the act. Now, who is an employee? Well, a regular employee who has been hired by an organization on a salary basis is called as an employee. Also, an employee who comes in only on a small period of time as a temporary project also is an employee as per the act. Now, the employee can take the remuneration. Also, a voluntary, organ voluntary person who is working without any remuneration also is called as an employee. Now, people who come in for internship for a regular time or a period of certain time also are called as employee. They can be directly employed by the organization or through an agent or a contractor. For example, housekeeping, security. These people are hired through a vendor. They do work on the same floor and then also they are called as the employee of that organization as per the act. Now, what is a workplace? All the organizations in India, government organizations, NGOs, all the hospitals and healthcare sector, houses where they employ the uh, maids to work in or housekeeping people to work in or drivers to work in, that also is called as a workplace. Corporations, farms, companies, any company, smallest to the biggest, with more than 10 employees, then it is called as a workplace as per the act. All the educational institutions, schools, colleges, any college is called as workplace. Sports facilities, hospitals, any kind of service provider and all the corporative societies. All these things constitute to be a workplace according to the act. There is something called as extended workplace. What is extended workplace? Now, an employee will be asked to deliver certain goods or services to another location. Could be a branch office, could be a regional office of their own or could be a courier service to the another organization or another place. Now, in this transit, could be through a flight, could be through a car, could be through any mode of transport. All these places is called extended workplace. Now, also certain times the organization conducts team lunches. Now, the place they go to also is called as extended workplace for that limited period of time. Sometimes organizations conduct annual cocktail dinners. 
such places like resorts where it is the venue that is also called as an extended workplace as per the act. The importance of this is to so show that all these definitions which we are covering as an employee, employer, workplace and extended workplace is important for us to understand the applicability of the act in this particular area. Thank you for watching these videos and stay tuned for more videos.